Good morning and welcome to worship on this second Sunday of Christmas. It is good to be here. As you join us online, I hope that you'll say that you're here. Type Amen and thanks be to God and participate in the liturgy. Today is the first Sunday of the month, is a day that we like to recognize birthdays. So please join me in happy birthday. These are for William Coyne, Priscilla Williams, Rick Washburn, Dale Guffey, Gail McKillop, and Karen Long, especially. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship with the music of the prelude. Please join me for a brief order of confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who was in the beginning, makes a dwelling with, among us, and who covers us with justice and mercy. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another.
God of goodness and loving kindness, we confess that we have sinned against you and our neighbors. We have turned away from your invitation to new life. We have turned away from the lowly and downtrodden. In your abundant mercy, forgive us our sins, those we know and those known only to you. For the sake of the one who came to live among us, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Hear the good news of peace and salvation. God forgives us all our sins, not through our own work, but through Jesus Christ, made known to all people. With all who come to the manger, rejoice in this amazing gift of grace. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have filled all the earth with the light of your incarnate word. By your grace, empower us to reflect your light in all that we do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our psalm is Psalm 147. Worship the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion, who has strengthened the bars of your gates and has blessed your children within you. God has established peace on your borders and satisfies you with the finest wheat. God sends out a command to the earth, a word that runs very swiftly. God gives snow like wool, scattering frost like ashes. God scatters hail like breadcrumbs. Who can stand against God's cold? The Lord sends forth the word and melts them. The wind blows and the waters flow. God declares the word to Jacob, statutes and judgments to Israel. The Lord has not done so to any other nation. They do not know God's judgments. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to John, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. 
There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become the children of God, who were born, not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came into the world through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. The, pray, the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Happy Christmas. On this tenth day of Christmas, instead of the story of Joseph and Mary traveling to Bethlehem, the shepherds in the fields or the magi coming to see the newborn king, we hear the beginning of John's Gospel. These first 18 verses, the prologue or opening of the fourth Gospel, are a confession of faith. Equipped with the stories of the Messiah's birth, John now shows us how Jesus' life reveals God to us. It is here that we meet Jesus as Logos, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word became flesh and lived among us. New Testament scholar Don Jewell once wrote that language was previously understood not as static words on a page, but as moving people, a force acting in the world. When we say in our liturgy, the word of the Lord, we aren't merely providing a citation. We are saying this is the divine speaking to us. The end of verse 14 describes the logos, the word, as full of grace and truth. And then in verse 16, John says, from his fullness, we have all received grace upon grace grace, grace upon grace, grace in place of grace, gift upon gift. Reading this, this verse, the image that first came to me was of the Russian nesting dolls in which each one contains another and another and another. But as with so many of our metaphors for God, that is too finite, too small, and too neat. The gifts of God for us are born from the grace and truth embodied in our Messiah, our Lord and Savior Jesus. And they are one upon another and another and another without end. On New Year's Day, a prayer resource that I like called The World in Prayer offered this prayer. Holy One, let us hear afresh your words of life. I am for you. This belief 
that God comes into the world, that we here on earth may know God, is at the heart of John's gospel. The Logos, the word that was with God and was God, is here for us. This promise that Christmas gives is such a simple truth, and yet it is so hard for so many to believe. The first gift we are given is love, shown to us in Jesus, in flesh here on earth, and in him we are given the gift of forgiveness, where we are invited into relationship and new life with God. And our life is full of God's continued gifts. It really is as simple as the words of the children's song. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. I wonder whether we recognize the gifts we are given and whether we can see how God uses us in the lives of others to be gifts to them. As followers of Jesus, we are asked to bear God's word and endless love out to our neighbors, community, and world, that they too will know God's abundance is for them. For much of 2020, we had a banner here in front of the church that said, Jesus is always with you. It was a needed word in the midst of isolation and fear. And by our presence in this place, we were the bearers of that word to our neighbors and community. In November and December, our congregation shared out of our abundance, providing more than $800 and 32 boxes of food to feed hungry neighbors who visit the shepherd's table at the Episcopal Church down the street. People experiencing homelessness, whose jobs haven't returned or whose need is more than they can bear alone. Know God's love in a hot meal and in groceries that won't spoil. Now in this new year, I wonder how we will continue to bear God's word and God's love to our neighbors, community, and world. Who does not yet know the grace upon grace, the gift upon gift, that is God's unending love for them? Who has not yet heard how much God loves them and how freely God's gift of forgiveness is given to them? How can we speak God's word, the force and movement of God's love through our actions? In the midst of creating resolutions and setting intentions for the new year, I pray we will see where we have been shown God's love and notice where we point to God through our love for others. And I pray that we will follow Jesus in ways that tell the world, God is here for you. Amen.
God has gathered his people into one church through Christ. Together with sisters and brothers throughout the world, we confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. On this day, we are privileged to be able to install our congregation council. We'll be doing that via Zoom. The following people have been elected by the congregation to the council. Greg Blaylock, Daryl Cook, Mike Hubbard, Gail Sherman, and Moody Wilkie. We give thanks for their willingness to serve. In baptism, we are welcomed into the body of Christ and sent to share in the mission of God. We rejoice now that these sisters and brothers will lead us in our common life and our mutual mission as a congregation. A reading from 1 Corinthians. There are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in every one. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. Council, you have been elected to the positions of leadership and trust in this congregation. According to the Constitution of Ascension Lutheran Church, the Congregation Council shall have general oversight over the life and activities of this congregation, and in particular its worship life. To the end that everything be done in accordance with the word of God and the faith and practice of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. On behalf of your sisters and brothers in Christ, I ask if you will accept and faithfully carry out the duties of the offices to which you have been elected. If you agree, the response to the following questions are, we will, and we ask God to help us. Will you see that the words and deeds of this household of faith bear witness to God, who gathers us into one, into one together with the whole church? We will, and we ask God to help us. Will you seek to involve all members of this congregation in worship, learning, witness, service, and support so that the mission of Christ is carried out in this congregation, in the wider church, in this community, and in the whole world? We will, we will ask and God God. To help us. Yeah. Will you be faithful in your specific area of serving, that the Spirit who empowers you may be glorified? We will. We will. Will you be examples of faith active in love, fostering peace, harmony, and mutual understanding in this congregation? We will. We will. And and now, our congregation gathered in all corners, I invite you. 
people of God, I ask you, will you support these, your elected leaders, and will you share in the mutual ministry that Christ has given to all who are baptized? If so, say we will, and we ask God to help us. We will, and ask God to help us. I now declare you installed as council members of this congregation. Almighty God bless you and direct your days and your deeds in peace that you may be faithful servants of Christ. Amen. Our service continues with our prayers of intercession. Joining our voices with the song of the angels, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Redeeming God, you gather together your people from the farthest parts of the earth. Protect your church from stumbling. Let it not be overcome by sorrow, division, or despair. Make us radiant with goodness, that we might live always to the praise of your glory. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You bring together heaven and earth. All creation testifies to your splendor. Hold the ecosystems of this earth in delicate balance, from coastlands to farmlands, forests to wetlands, deserts to rainforests. Show us new ways to live in harmony with the world around us. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. You overflow with grace upon grace. Expand the imaginations of those who serve in positions of authority. Open their hearts to the needs of their nations and communities. Protect all those in harm's way and those risking danger for the sake of others. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. You bring consolation to those who weep. Embrace those who feel far off, excluded, or defeated. Accompany those living with chronic and invisible illness. Sustain the weak and the weary. Refresh those who labor under the weight of pain or sickness. We pray especially for those we name aloud or silently in our hearts. Grant Adcock, Fran Auk, Kathy Backoff, Dan Birch, Carolyn Blitz, Christine Bridges, Cody Bryant, Mike Callahan, Chris Carmen, Martha Cash, Edna Cooper, the Davenport family, Charles and Mary Degree, Sahar Degree, Gloria Dellinger, Charles Duvall, Maurice and Barbara Duvall, Tim Farmer, Avon Fields, Ann Fitzsimmons, Mike Green, Marky and Carl Greenwald, Rena Huffman, Michael Hunsinger, Joe Hutchinson, Patty Jenkins, Steve Jolly, Kirk Kent, Mark Kent, Rachel Kidwell, Brian Legrand, Jim Lilly, Sonia and Gerald Lovelace, Brenda Lowry, Pam Lucas, Eva McCombs, Janice McGovern, Sherry Dawn Mack, Mary Beth Mees, Wanda Mullinex, Teresa Olson, Bob Patzer, Linda Patzer, Gerard Peruzzi, Margaret Peruzzi, 
Liz and Ron Del Pagetto, Tommy and Paula Price, Bonnie Reedy, Beth Ryan, Lola Ritchie, Shannon Sellers, Jean Tesnier, Pam Unger, Edith Walker, David Waldrop, Molly and Daryl Waterstrat, Alfie Welch, Lad Welch, Christopher Williver, Mary Ann Woolley. And I invite you to add names into the chat and comments that they may be shared in community. Dean Davis, Lynn Washburn, Doc Paul, Bob Bryant, William Coyne, Jim Wilson, Bobby Johnson, Gerald Washburn, Ray Valentine, Lucinda Wallen, Lisa Upton, Emma Ock, Brooke Buchanan, Samantha Hoffman, Jacob Stone, Catherine May Lilly, the staff and leaders of Hospice Cleveland County and those they serve. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. You turn, you come to us in the beauty of darkness and of light, bring justice and reconciliation to communities divided by oppressions and misuse of power. Guide us to speak holy words of advocacy and truth. Help us to honor your image in one another. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. You turn our mourning into joy. We give thanks for those who have died in faith. With all the saints, give us our inheritance in Christ. In the fullness of time, gather us all together in your mercy. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. God of mercy, come quickly to us with grace upon grace as we lift these and all our prayers to you. In the name of Jesus, amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. I invite you to share the peace through video or comments. As we move into this time of offering, I give thanks first to all of you who have continued to make financial gifts, offerings, and tithes to support the ministry and mission of Ascension Lutheran Church. That we have continued to be able to be Christ's presence here and throughout our community and world. If you'd like to make a gift today, you can do that using the website or the Gift Plus app. You can mail your gift into the P.O. Box, which is P.O. Box 266 here in Shelby 28151, or you may text the amount you wish to give to 
Let us pray. Holy God, the beginning and the ending, our hope as we wait, we praise you for joining us to your people of old. We bless you for your prophets who call us to righteousness and promise a new earth with peace for all. For the word of your covenant, we thank you, O God. We thank you, O God. We praise you for the coming of Jesus our Lord, who lifts up the lowly, heals the suffering world, and proclaims your way of mercy and truth. For your word, who is Christ, we magnify you, O God. We magnify you, O God. Send your spirit on all who receive your word. Nurture our faith with your grace. Accompany us with your might and empower our zeal for your justice and joy. For your word through the church, we praise you, O God. We praise you, O God. All praise to you, holy God, today, tomorrow, and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. When our congregation gathered for Holy Communion with all the saints from every time and place, we heard again the story of God's mighty acts and the love shown us in Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. The holy meal of the Lord's Supper was shared. Now we share this word of life and this bread and cup of blessing that we may share in these same gifts and be strengthened by the Christian community even though we gather separately for a time. Gathered at the Lord's table, our congregation remembered with thanksgiving that in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. This is the supper of our Lord Jesus Christ. This bread and cup shared in our community of faith are here given for you. I invite you to receive the elements you have at home, knowing that they are the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given and shed for you. Let us pray. Gracious God, in this meal you have drawn us to your heart and nourished us at your table with food and drink, the body and blood of Christ, now send us forth to be your people in the world and to proclaim your truth this day and evermore. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who sent the Holy Spirit to Mary, proclaimed joy through the angels, sent the shepherds with good news, and led the Magi by a star, bless you this day through the word made flesh. Amen.
Go in peace, share the gift of Jesus. Thanks be to God.